Hi, I'm Jack Newcastle coming to you from the lab of Newcastle Language Systems. Pretty high-tech lab, huh? That's all we got. Well, we provide first-class service in second language acquisition. We offer classes in conversational English, business English, and we can also help you prepare for that TOEFL, TOEIC, or IELTS test you may need to take. As a linguist, though, one of my primary areas of study is pronunciation and I help students acquire either the general American accent or an international English accent, which is a combination of American and British accents designed for learners who are working in international markets and at multinational corporations to help you better understand each other. For the past few years, I've also been developing a new method to help learners produce and comprehend the sometimes difficult sounds of the English language. And it's a method that is partly based on what's called the motor theory of speech perception, which states that when we hear someone speak our language, the articulators, meaning the lips, the tongue, the vocal cords, and all the muscles involved with speech production, receive small signals from the brain and are actually activated to reproduce the same sounds we are hearing. We don't notice this activation, of course. The signals are very, very small, just teeny, 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 tiny signals, like that, tiny. Small than that. But research has shown that the movement is there, possibly helping us in some way to comprehend the sounds and words we hear. It's sort of like a loop that runs between the muscles and areas of the brain that are involved with language comprehension and production. Admittedly, the theory is still controversial in linguistics, and at first I really didn't think much of it myself. You see, the most commonly followed theory in language instruction is that learners must be able to hear the sounds of a language before trying to produce them. And that's what most other methods will tell you to do. They say, get out there, listen to the native speakers, and then try to make the sounds that they're making. Well, unfortunately, that's like saying, hey, you want to learn how to play a piano? Go listen to someone play a piano, and then go home and play a piano. Sure, some people can do it, natural born musicians, but most of us can't. Most of us need an instructor to show us where to place our fingers on the keyboard, and how to move them. And as I've discovered through hundreds of lessons with my students, if I teach them how to produce the sounds first by focusing on tongue placement and mouth position and making sure they are vibrating the vocal cords when needed, they say it is only then that they really begin to hear the difference between some of the more difficult and similar sounds of English. To give you the background, it was my own studies in French that led me to pursue this method, as I myself for years could not hear the difference between the words tu meaning you and tu meaning all in French. But that was until I found an instructor who taught me to say tu at the front of the mouth and tu at the back. And then suddenly I started to hear the difference all across the language. That front rounded u sound is just something that doesn't have any meaning in English. And so it's very common for English speakers to believe u and u are just different versions of the same sound. But now because I know how to correctly pronounce U, at least most of the French tell me I can, I can hear the difference in the language. As for English learners, some of you may not be able to hear the difference between the S and Z sounds, while others may not hear the difference between the F and S sounds. It really depends on which sounds English shares with your native language. But through my instruction, my students have improved both their comprehension and production of these sounds and all the others in the English language. As for the lessons themselves, each of them focuses on a pair of closely related English sounds, such as s and z, and I've color-coded these lessons so that it's easy for you to remember when to produce one sound and when to produce the other. For the vowels, each of the colors is different, so we have blue for oo and yellow for e eh and so forth, while for the consonants, we use red for the voiceless sounds, such as f and s. There's no vocal vibration for these sounds, so we can think of red to stop the vocal cords, while we use green for the voiced sounds, such as v and z. Here, green tells us to go ahead and vibrate those vocal cords. So, now that you have the basics, I invite you to watch our training videos. For each set of sounds, there's an introductory video that you need to watch first, as it is in these videos that I will show you how to actually produce the sounds. There is then an approximately 15 minute exercise video you can follow with words, word pairs, and sentences all carefully selected and designed to help you add the sounds of English to your set of linguistic skills. 
Keep in mind, however, that the exercise videos do not contain all the phonetic environments in which the sound can appear. And just because a learner can produce a sound in one environment, it's possible they won't be able to produce it in other environments, meaning when it appears next to other sounds. For example, while some learners have no problem with the I sound when they say it in words like bit and kick, they sometimes have trouble with it when they try to say it before an ul sound, such as in words like fill and build, which they will produce as feel and build. There are also some difficult consonant combinations in the language that we do practice in our classes, but just don't have the time to present in the exercise videos. Combinations like ks that we hear at the end of the word texts. To be able to successfully produce these sounds, you may need a professional coach. So if you do need that extra bit of help, huh, huh, you can always schedule lessons with us by visiting NewcastleLS.com. As I said, aside from accent addition classes, we offer lessons in conversational and business English, and we can also help you prepare for that TOEFL, TOEIC, or IELTS test you may need to take. Of course, unlike some other second language sites, our lessons are always taught by highly qualified professionals, some of them with master's and even doctoral degrees in fields such as language, linguistics, and education. Lessons can be one-on-one -on -one if you like, but we can also provide group lessons. So if you have some friends or colleagues who would like to join you, we can accommodate up to three students in each session, all for the price of one student. That is three for one. And that's going to save you some money. And everybody likes that, don't we? So I hope you can join us in class sometime. But in the meantime, good luck in your English studies. Be seeing you.